like to give you a little background on me. I'm a web developer who's working on transitioning into becoming a teacher. After getting involved with education, one of the disappointing trends I found was a decrease of enrollment in computer science, especially in girls. Over the last 10 years, there's been a steady decline in enrollment in computer science programs. Research has shown that piquing students' interest early is a great way to get them interested, so I've got a great opportunity on my hands. To get started doing some action research, the first thing we'll need is a teacher. That's me. Okay, so we've got one student. How about one more? Hi. So you girls are interested in learning about computer science? Yep. Yeah. Before getting started tutoring, I decided to go and seek some advice. I contacted my friend Dana, who volunteers at the Center for Women in Technology at UMBC. She introduced me to a set of tips that are designed to help retain students in computer science. The first one is to consider students' interests when planning assignments, because students learn better when it relates to their own lives. Number two, emphasize intellectual capacity like a muscle increases with effort. Students need to know there's not just one type of person that can learn computer science, that all of them can succeed with a little bit of practice and study. Three, provide early and consistent feedback on assignments. Without this feedback, some people might underestimate their own performance. Four, praise and encourage your students. Some students may see a lack of encouragement as discouragement, so providing positive feedback can go a long way. Five, connect students to faculty. Six, build collaboration into your classroom and curriculum. When students work together, they build relationships and a sense of belonging to a group. Seven, Routinely discuss the options, advantages, and rewards of computing careers, including your own experience. Eight, steer clear of stereotypes embedded in assignments and examples used in lectures. Treat all students as individuals, not representatives of a group. 10, track student recruitment and retention. So let's get to know our first pupil, Brittany. I spoke with her parents and teachers and found she's a straight-A student, part of the math team, likes problem solving, and has a strong creative side. Brittany has never taken a computer science course before. She was referred to me by a teacher who thought she would be interested in learning. I got excited when I met Brittany. I knew how much she liked problem solving and knew she was a really smart girl. I wanted to get into some fun problem solving as soon as possible and figured we'd be able to move at a really quick pace. The accelerated pace I tried to set ended up being a complete disaster. I went to it fast and ended up with a confused and overwhelmed student. Luckily, I was able to turn things around in the end of the lesson using Scratch, a programming language designed by MIT for teaching children. It also took a lot of reassurance, letting the student know that any confusion that they were experiencing was due to my fault moving too quickly, and that things would probably go a little easier next time. I let them know what a great job they had done. And using Scratch, the student was able to build up some of their own confidence by succeeding at a few things. We took the next few lessons at a slower pace. I struggled a little bit trying to keep it interesting with such a limited number of concepts that we had learned to this point. Scratch certainly helped a lot, as it gave a lot of opportunities to be creative, even if you hadn't learned that much programming yet. I experimented with different teaching techniques using chunking and modeling to try to find ways to help Brittany learn best. After a few lessons, she had finally learned enough that I could give her some challenging individual problems. Because of Brittany's interest in math, I chose a program where we'd be able to use mathematical formulas. So we were going to build a temperature converter to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius, and vice versa. To get Brittany prepared, we went over some sample code that was a similar type of problem. We did a code tracing exercise with this code, where we went through line by line and rewrote the output as mathematical formulas. Brittany was really able to connect with this example. Brittany then got started on doing the temperature converter on her own. I noticed the mistake as she was going along, but didn't interrupt. When she ran the program and saw it didn't have the right output, she said, don't help me, I want to figure this out on my own. 
I suggested that she trace the code using the same method we did earlier. When doing so, she said, oh, I know what I did wrong, and was able to fix the problem. This was a lesson where I felt a real breakthrough had occurred, and she was really into it. I knew when I had started working with her that this was the kind of stuff that she'd really enjoy. I wanted to find a way to give Brittany more challenging problems without having to teach her a lot more code, so I decided to try something new. I picked one of my favorite problems, which is coming up with the algorithm to solve a maze. I really like this problem because there are several ways to solve it. Instead of having to write the actual code to create the program, Brittany was just going to have to come up with all of the steps required that would make it possible for a computer program to solve a maze. I then took the steps that she had come up with and put them into code so that she could see her program in action and see if it was able to solve mazes or not. Her first few tries solved some mazes, but not all. And in the end, she was able to come up with a way that would solve every maze. Tutoring Brittany ended up not only being a learning experience for her, but a real learning experience for myself as well. My experience with Shana ended up being much different than my experience with Brittany. Shana, like Brittany, was also a straight-A student and also really enjoyed problem solving. Her learning style ended up being just like my own. She struggled with things where she had to do memorization of facts, but liked anything where she got to get a good understanding of how things worked or why things happened. She has some computer science experience from school, and she told me she really likes the problem-solving part of it, but wanted to learn more about what she can do with it. We were able to cover some applications of computer science and go over a lot of different programming languages and computer science disciplines. We talked about how programming can be useful in lots of different fields and how knowing computer programming can give you a leg up no matter what job you take. Because Shana had an understanding of programming languages from her class, we were able to cover a number of programming languages and get a little bit of hands-on time with each of them. After getting a little taste of everything, I asked Shana what she'd really like to learn more about. She decided she wanted to learn more about web development. We spent a few sessions doing simple hands-on assignments. We talked about how what she was doing related to what I do in my job as well as the things like Facebook and Twitter. I could tell she really liked the hands-on activities and figuring things out. After we had covered enough in our sessions, I assigned her an independent project to work on between our sessions, where she would create a simple web page that would collect survey information and provide reports on the data it collected. She was able to complete the assignment and said she had a lot of fun figuring it out. When she had finished it, we discussed some ways that this could be applied in a lot of different ways as well as other things that could be done with the skills she had learned up to this point. The tutoring ended up being a bigger challenge than I expected. Turns out I wasn't able to focus my action research on one thing, but instead ended up constantly doing research to find better ways to serve these kids best. I learned a lot through the experience by trying several different teaching styles each lesson, and was able to find out what worked for these students and what didn't. Much of the information I gathered was through observation of the students, I also learned a lot from the students themselves. At the end of each lesson, I would ask what they enjoyed, learned, or had a hard time with. Their feedback was invaluable for helping me adapt. At the end of our final lessons, I asked about their overall experience, what they learned, what they liked most, and what helped them learn. They both agreed that they liked it best when they got to do independent practice, and that they really liked the problem-solving aspects. Brittany said she enjoyed using Scratch to make stories. She also let me know that the time that we compared code with mathematical equations really helped her a lot. I was pleased to hear Shana said she liked learning about the differences in the programming languages as well as the different applications of computer science. I was afraid I was boring her to death because it wasn't a hands-on activity, but it turns out she really enjoyed it. The best news is both of them told me they were interested in learning more computer science. Reflecting back on my own experience, I learned a lot more than I was expecting. I ended up spending a lot more time than I was expecting to on my computer looking up new ways to help these students. Scratch ended up being a great tool for beginner programmers, and I was able to learn a lot more on ways to better utilize it. I was happy to find some great ways to give students more frequent hands-on opportunities. One method I tried with great success was chunking the information into smaller sections 
and sticking hands-on activities between each of these. This led to strong retention and proved to be more enjoyable for the students. The other technique that I found that worked was allowing students to be hands-on the whole time so that when I was doing an example, they would follow along and create it themselves. When using both these methods, I noticed less confusion in the students. It was easier for me to identify if there was a problem with student learning as they got to apply the learning more frequently. Parent involvement ended up being pretty minimal throughout the process. We talked mostly about their interest and learning styles. Getting more parent involvement would have been difficult since many of the parents don't have much of a computer background. Although I had a lot of success with the tutoring exercises, I always felt that I could do better and keep improving, and it's something I'm going to strive to do throughout my career.